Republican congressman and chair of the House Oversight Committee did an interview on Ted Cruz's podcast recently and said something so absurd. And we'll break down why it is so absurd. But he says that he thinks Joe Biden has been selling access to our enemies for decades, continuing on the accusations he's been perpetuating without evidence. Uh, But then Ted Cruz goes, what's your basis for that? And James Comer explains his basis for why he believes these things he's been trying to prove but hasn't been able to. And his explanation is funny if it wasn't so dishonest. I think that Joe Biden has been selling access to our enemies. Do you know? For decades. I think that... So long before Hunter was involved. So so let me stop you on that. You said he's been selling access to our enemies for decades. That, That... on the face of it is an extraordinary statement. What's your basis for that? Basis is... Um, what do you mean, Ted? I get invited on Fox News when I say that. You know, if you study Joe Biden like I have, uh, he's always been cash uh, He He's never had a successful career in investing or anything like that. Then you look at the assets he's accumulated on a Senate salary, it, it's pretty, pretty impressive. And you look at the upkeep to those assets, I, I believe that if we, you know, so the, you're saying a classic Corvette done by itself? No, I think that so much about this is so wrong. Number one, I'll get to the reality of Biden's finances that does not bolster what James Comer is saying. But even just saying that someone's finances are kind of confusing and wow, they seem to have really stretched a dollar and have a lot of assets, even though they've been making this amount, this that, and other thing. That doesn't prove they've been selling access to foreign governments um, in their position as an elected official. But especially when you consider that what he's saying is not accurate, Biden notoriously, and I'll dive into his net worth and accumulation of wealth and stuff in a moment, but he's notoriously one of the least wealthy when he was in the Senate, least wealthy senators. And then as vice president, wasn't particularly wealthy for the salary he had been getting for the amount of years that he'd been getting it. Compared to your average American, he was wealthy, but not compared to a lot of other elected officials. It was really only after he left being vice president that he started making a lot of money with book deals and speeches and stuff like that, as we see often. Before I show you the uh, specifics on that, sorry about that, let me show you one more clip where he says, also, I think Obama knew. I think that that Obama knew this was going on towards the end, and I think that's why Obama didn't want Biden run for president. I don't think it had anything to do with his age. I don't think it had anything to do with the gaff. I think he never th- underestimate the ability for Joe Biden to f it up. Th- that's right. Man, and, that's and, and, and look, they had to know what was going on with with Ukraine. I mean, that stinks to high heaven. Oh, huh. well, James, if it stinks to high heavens, then why bother proving anything that you're saying? It stinks to high heavens. That's all the proof you need. So even if it stunk to high heavens, even if Biden's finances were off in some way, or he was wealthier than you expect someone to be at this point in his life for how much money he's been making in the Senate, vice presidency and presidency, still, it would not be justified if you're a reasonable person to baselessly accuse him of uh, being bribed. There are other explanations for your perception of someone's finances being a little bit strange. It is especially outrageous when you consider Biden's finances, the reality of them. I came across this Forbes piece that talks about how he kind of made most of his money after leaving the vice presidency. And it's because he had a big profile. He finally cashed in and did the speaking engagements and the book deals and all of that. But yet still, people wonder why he's not even richer. And definitely before he left the vice presidency, It was a big question. A lot of people ask, wow, Biden doesn't have the size net worth that someone would have normally at his status and his uh, years in elected office. Number one, because of the six-figure salary you get, and if you're there for decades and decades, that can accumulate. And if you invest it properly, of course. And then on top of that, a lot of times people do cash in with the book deals and with all these different things that a powerful, famous name brings. And Biden just didn't seem to have the net worth that reflected that. 
uh, Forbes reports on this. On the day America's first billionaire president took office, middle class Joe Biden boarded the Amtrak out of Washington, D.C.'s Union Station, obviously middle class was in quotation marks, bound for Delaware with the kind of modest fortune you might expect from someone who had spent his adult life as an elected official. $2.5 million, which is a lot of money. That's a big net worth. But again, if you compare that to other people in elected office for the time that he's been as prominent as he's been, it's actually not very large, mostly composed of pensions and real estate. But Biden was about to cash in. And it talks about how by the end of 2017, he uh, and his wife, Jill, had earned $11.1 million. They raked in $4.6 million the next year, followed by $1 million in 2019 and $630,000 in 2020 and it talks about how this came from selling books delivering speeches and many things but the article asks if you calculate how much money was being made why isn't he even richer it's really strange so it's the exact opposite point that james comer is trying to make there especially when you consider most of the money that he's made when his net worth increased the fastest the most was after he stopped having influence so what would be the influence peddling going on there? And the sources in which that money was coming from wouldn't exactly be sources that would be trying to influence peddle. And so every which way you look at this, James Comer's narrative is falling apart. And so now he's left saying, well, it sinks to high heavens and he's been trapped for cash, even though he notoriously wasn't compared to his counterparts. And he'll continue to, for political purposes, push this narrative no matter how detached from the facts of the situation it is thank you so much for watching if you want to be a part of what makes this show possible plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are able to be uploaded to the youtube channel plus get the bonus show on the weekends you can do so by going to lukebeasleyshow.com membership that's lukebeasleyshow.com membership and there's a link in the description